Shri Nagesh Ji has given me is the joy of giving. In fact, to be passionate about any profession itself is an art of giving. Without giving yourself, you can't be passionate about anything. The very fact I am passionate about it, say for example, we are here together between 6 and 7 or 7, 7 15. It means I am giving away my time I would have spent elsewhere. Maybe I would have spent with my family members or there is a 2020 going on I would have seen on the TV. Yeah, in, in fact, the, there are so many temptations to do something else. But in order to be here, I have given all that. There is always a joy in giving up rather than taking. There are so many lovely videos I had. I will send them to you. You can show them when they are free. I have seen so many touching videos where there is joy in giving. I had the unique privilege of being with Mother Teresa. We have heard about Mother Teresa. I don't know anyone in the group would have seen her live. Most of us have seen on TV or visuals. But I had the privilege of staying with her for three days in Calcutta. When, he, when I was there, I was a very young boy. I just finished my graduation. I wrote an article and it got published. So I had to make a presentation in Calcutta. It was International Science Congress. I was to be there for three days. And I went there and the university vice chancellor said, you can't stay here because the next line movement is at the peak. And you can't stay in the hostel, somebody may beat you up. You stay in some professor's house, some Bhattacharya's house. I felt a little awkward to go and stay in somebody's house against his wish. I had to go and stay. Basically, I have a nature of volunteerism. I thought I can do something. I just went in the afternoon to Nirmal Hurde. I don't know how many of you know this. Missionaries of Charities, of which Mother Teresa was the head at that time, had their office which is called as Nirmal Hurde. I went to Nirmal Hurde, uh, Mother was not there. The one who is the chief now, Sister Nirmala, was there at that time. I went and asked Sister, can I be here for some time? Have I shared this with you? No, then it is interesting. Uh, he said, um, uh, can I be here for some time? I asked Nirmala. She said, wait a minute, what are you doing? What is your background? She asked me a few questions. Wait for some time, mother would come. After 15, 20 minutes, mother came. Let me tell you, my friends. She was about 4 feet, 10 inches in height. Drooping shoulders. I have not seen a more wrinkled face than that. But I should also tell you, I have not seen a more beautiful face than that. The steely grey eyes would not look at you, would look through you. She came and just held my hands and said, what are you doing? I said, I am a student, finished my graduation. Okay, chemistry? I said, yes, go and work in the pharmacy. She never asked me from which state I have come, what community I belong to, nothing else. Go and help. Because she thought chemistry is related to pharmacy. She sent me to the pharmacy. And there was another sister managing the pharmacy. She told me what is to be done on a PPA paper. Everything is free there. Just to account for which medicine is given to whom. That's all I had to do. They took me to a hall as big as this. There were only three beds already spread. They gave me the fourth bed to sleep there. First day went on without any uh, major changes. Second day in the afternoon, at about 1.30, something happened. I found the volunteers of missionaries of charities carrying an old lady on the stretcher. How old was she? I was not able to guess. Completely emaciated body, she could be 85 or 90. She had very high fever, she was unconscious and she was blabbering continuously. When a very high fever goes up very high, you start saying something incoherent. She was brought there, mother came, sister Nirmala saw her, they took her inside, gave her a bath, put a gown on her, made her sleep there and doctor was called. Doctor gave some treatment and sister and mother sat next to her and mother was pressing the legs of this old lady and the lady was constantly chatting something. She was saying something, blabbering. Since I don't understand Bengali, I asked another sister, what is the old lady saying? The story is very simple. She is an old Brahmin lady. She lost her husband when the son was one year old. Against tremendous odds, you know, those days conservative family, they shaved her head and put her in a red sari. 
she worked as a maid servant here and there cooked the somewhere else to keep this child brought him up gave him education probably got him married i don't know whether there was a clash between the mother in law or the daughter in law or some what happened we don't know but the old lady came out of the house or she was sent out whatever as long as there was enough energy in the body she was working elsewhere when she became old who will give her work she started begging on the streets of calcutta she was found near the kali ghat she hadn't got anything to eat for 3 days she had very high viral fever now she is blabbering and saying my son is like this she was cursing her son only son i did so much for him if he had cared for me i would not have happened like this something like that she was then mother was also saying something i asked what is mother saying mother is telling the old lady don't curse your son don't curse your son he is a good boy he will come back don't worry somebody has given him wrong ideas he will come back to you take you home and this continuously went on by about 4 o'clock the old lady regained consciousness maybe because of the treatment or because of the emotional support given to her she was conscious and they gave her something to drink and first thing the mother did was to ask her what is your address she got the address of the son sent a, a volunteer to that with a jeep the volunteer went and told the son your mother is here is written on the paper that fellow did turn the paper and said i have nothing to do with lady particularly now that she has gone to missionaries i don't want her back at all and mother did not tell her but treatment continued by 7 o'clock the old lady was quite fresh she said she was recounting stories of her son when he was very young yeah very good boy you know very nice boy hard working boy intelligent he will come back i know he will come back one day and she was so positive about life we thought the lady survived night she gave her some bread to eat and the lady slept at about 2:30 or 3 o'clock in the morning there is again a commotion there it keeps happening there commotion and everybody ran into the room where this old lady was kept a doctor was summoned he tried all his best by about 4 o'clock the old lady died immediately another letter was sent to the son her mother is no more and the treatment was given it is not successful would you like to take the body back again the same ruthless way he wrote on the back side of the letter saying that i had nothing to do with her when she was alive i don't want that body you can do anything with the body the letter came back at about 5 5 o'clock or 5:15 we were all gathered around this old body's uh, old lady's body till then mother had not asked me anything the moment the letter came back suddenly she had turned to me and asked me are you a brahmin i said yes suddenly she asked me a question even now i think i shudder to think of it suddenly she said can you do the rituals for this lady to tell you honestly my friends we belong to a old culture old tradition when i was very young in the school there was a belief that when your parents are alive you are not supposed to go to crematorium forget about going to crematorium she is asking me to do all the right that a son should do to the mother i should be very honest to you initially i shuddered i thought i should not do it because those were the days when telephones were not so easily available my house did not have a telephone no mobiles i could not contact them i thought for a moment she could see the hesitation in my eyes and my face but then i asked myself why did i go to nirmal hurday as what as a volunteer volunteers have no choice if you choose is a business deal volunteers have no choice i said yes uh, mother i'll do it and a priest was called i went to crematorium with this body i did all the rites that a son should do to the mother came back took bath i was feeling exhausted i was feeling guilty i have not told my parents and i have done something i don't know whether it is good for me or bad and then i sat on the sofa like this mother came and sat next to me patted my back and said are you worried son i said yes mother i am worried for two reasons one is uh, in our tradition we don't go to crematorium when our parents are alive i did it without even asking my parents what will happen to them i don't know i remember what she told me don't worry son nothing would happen to your parents in fact they would live longer than they would normally live because you done a service which nobody does and it proved to be true 
My father lived up to 87 till the last one year. My mother is still there. And then second, what is the second worry? She said, all that you did yesterday is all wasted. The old lady did not survive. She did not survive. All that you did was wasted. Then suddenly she stood up and told me, which I can't forget till the last breath of my life. She told me, nothing is wasted, son. Nothing is wasted. I wanted the old lady to have dignity in death. Actually, hair stand on end when I think of it. I had only heard of dignity in life. Am I right? I had not heard the word dignity in death. I said, what do you mean by dignity in death? Her answer was so superb, no superlative can match it. She told very simple. Child, did you see when the lady came yesterday to the hospital, to the Nirmal Hurday, she was cursing her own son. Cursing her own son. And mind was angry, frustrated. Am I right? She said, she put her hand, I still feel the finger. The little heart inside you is a temple of God. Little heart inside is a temple of God. You should always be clean. Absolutely clean. When it is filled with jealousy, anger, frustration, all negative thoughts, it is absolutely uh, dirtied. When she came, she was cursing her own son. Did you see what happened yesterday night? She was saying, my son is good, he will come back and take me. By then her temple was clean. When you are born as a child, a new child, your temple is absolutely clean. No, no negative feelings there. When you die, your temple should be again clean. Then you can go up to the heavens, look into the eyes of God and tell him, God, I have come back as clean as you sent me to earth. And that to me is the dignity of death. If you can keep your heart pure and free from all aberrations in the last moment of your life, that is dignity in death. I said, how does it come? She said, very simple. The more you receive, negative feelings start building up. Or biased feelings start building up. Supposing he helps me a lot, I start seeing he's a great man. I don't see the other aspect of it. My mind gets biased. I become party to him. In fact, one of the articles I wrote, there's a direct relation between tongue and hands. Direct relation between tongue and hands. The moment you spread your hand, your tongue dies. You can't talk. Am I right? If you spread your hand and take from somebody some money or something else, when you receive something, you lose your right to criticize a person. He says it, if you go on giving, your tongue is always good. You are not biased at all. And his sister told me very simple, your heart can be purer and purer only when you choose to give rather than choose to receive. I learnt a beautiful definition from Mother Teresa of dignity in death and what it means to give. I have seen my friends, I had talked of social service and all that, but I really understood after seeing Mother Teresa there. There were at least about 30, 40 uh, leprosy patients in the hall. Terminal patients. There is no treatment. They have to live there till they die. You know, you can, you can imagine in your own house, your grandmother or a grandfather has a wound there. There is pus formation. I had to clean and put the bandage. We make our face ten times, you know, how to do it. But these were people on the roads. Lower jaw is not there. Skin is not there. Fingers are not there. Nose is not there. A completely emaciated body. And I have seen Mother Teresa feeding with her own hands. With no wrinkle of uh, feeling bad on her face. That is something extraordinary giving. I saw and I believed that Mother Teresa became a very important person. Became a very successful person. Only because she had that unstinted desire to give. Till the last moment of her life she gave. So I thought she was enjoying very much every time she served. She called her patients all the people who came there as her God. She would say, they are my gods. Therefore, she decided to serve them. So I learnt a lesson. There is a great joy in giving rather than receiving. I shall also slightly shift to another area. When I was teaching in the college, I was teaching chemistry. As you said, I was a chemistry teacher in a college for 25 years. One day, Suddenly, in the uh, midst of the class, I asked my students a question. I can ask you also the same question. How many of you know your grandfather's name? Uh, very simple. I, I know. Everybody will know. Great grandfather's name. Great grandfather's father's name. 
great grandfather's grandfather's name. We don't know. That means we don't know anything beyond five generations. Four generations, probably five generations. Beyond that, we don't know. And same thing happened in my college. Two one said, we don't know. I said, I'm surprised. Why don't you know your great great grandfather's name? One girl stood up and answered rudely. Probably there was truth in it. Not worth remembering, sir. I said, my God, why not worth remembering? What is so great he has done for me to remember, sir? I said, the way she said, I'm cool down, cool down. And then I told them, I'll ask you some more names. I mentioned some more names. If you know them, raise your hands. Otherwise, don't worry about them. Students were curious. I asked them, you know the name of Ayodhya is Rama? Rama of Ayodhya? Ah, everybody knew. Krishna? That Krishna. Everybody knew. Buddha? Yes. Mahavira? Yes. Jesus Christ? Yes. Prophet Muhammad? Yes. Ramakrishna? Vivekananda? Basavanna? Shankaracharya? Everybody knows. My students said, everybody knows them. I said, I have a serious problem. Problem is, I am not the great great grandson of any one of them, but remember all their names. But I don't remember my own great great grandfather's name. Why is that? Think over and tell me. I gave five minutes to them. And there was one child in my class, extremely brilliant child, Padmini Priyadarshini. I remember her name. It happened 20 years ago, but I still remember it. She did her BSc first rank and went to IIM Ahmedabad and became a topper there. Now she runs her own organization in Dubai. Uh, that girl, very brilliant girl. She had a uh, very sensitive mind also. Suddenly I saw tears in her eyes. I said, why Padmini? What happened? Why are you crying? She said, sir, I got a lesson of my life today. What is the lesson? Her answer became a lesson for my life. She told me beautifully, sir, I don't remember my own great, great grandfather, but remember the names of all these people who lived much before all these people lived. Probably because I learnt a lesson that anyone who lives for himself shall not be remembered by the world and anyone who lives for others shall not be forgotten. Don't you think there is a truth in it? What was the bank balance of Vivekananda? There was no bank at all. Where is the bank balance? All his depositions are in our hearts. When you think of Vivekananda, appears a young man, am I right? We don't think of an old uh, Vivekananda at all. He lived like this only. But you think of your grandfather, looks very old. Great grandfather must be pretty, pretty old. But Vivekananda does not look old. Shankaracharya looks very young. You think of all gods that we have in the calendars. We are not seen. The pictures are put. So nice, charming fellows, all of them. Uh, such nice people. They have painted them young. You know why? They become so old probably, age-wise. But why are they painted young? They never become old. They, they become gods in fact. They become, never become old because they did not live for themselves. If Rama had lived only for himself, not for a value, he would not have been remembered. Krishna had the ability to become the king of the entire universe at that time. Dharmaraja who conquered the whole world had kept his crown at his feet. He did not become a king any time. Krishna never became a king. He preferred to be a charioter rather than a king. That desire to give, when we are on top of the world, Krishna is Jagad, Jagad Guru as we call, he was a Jagad Guru but preferred to be a charioter, that desire to give that service made him the great one. So all of them, I learnt a lesson, anyone who lives for himself shall not be remembered, anyone who lives for others shall not be forgotten. Beautiful thing, only when you give, people remember you. The people who amassed huge amount of money. I ask a question to you. Who was the richest man in the year 2000 in the world? Richest man in the world in the year 2000. Don't tell me Gates. He was not there. Don't tell me Buffet was not there. I am ruling out all the possibilities. Normally we give Buffet and uh, Bill, Bill Gates. No. Any idea? Don't remember them? Don't worry. I also don't remember. Who bothers? Who bothers? Tell me. I'm not asking the old information, just 12 years ago, who was the richest man in the world, we don't remember. But we don't have to worry about Jesus Christ. We know, he existed 2,000 2, years ago. How is that? He did not have any bank balance, but he is remembered. The people with huge bank balance are not remembered. Therefore, money is not success. 
your ability to give to people is success. Yes. In fact, I have got a very interesting definition, sir. I am sharing with the IIMs, so I teach in IIMs. A very interesting question asked these boys. Do you think money is success? Few boys, yes, yes. I said, yes. Many times you feel I should build a house in almost every headquarter of every country. Have as many jets as possible. Change from one jet to jet, another jet in the sky itself, not even come to airport. Then you call a very successful man. Am I right? We call him successful man. 